thanks for staying with us. So, um, a report came to us. We got this report from Daily Trust. Um, they had done a report concerning Zamfara civil servants organizing a prayer session, special prayer for the non-payment of their salaries. According to them, they gathered at um, the Eid Mosque in Guzao, uh, state capital, on Saturday. And um, specifically, many of them said that many of them have been pushing to be beggars, mm. unable to eat one square meal a day. Mm. So according to them, the prayer session is specially meant to commit their dear governor, <coughs> head of service, members of House of Assembly, and all those concerned for God to enable them to be compassionate on them. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. Now, that is what we have seen coming from Zamfara State. Now, in linking that story to the report we took yesterday, that many outgoing governors will be living with lots of fat pensions as a result of the laws being passed by the House of Assembly. So they're going to be going home with jumbo packages. We're going to use Zamfara as a case study in this regard, that the citizens are coming together. And we saw pictures. Daily, Sun, uh, Daily Trust actually put pictures of these people praying, seeking God's intervention because they are actually resorting to become beggars. That's the reality in some of our states. In some of our states, they have potential but are not regenerating revenue. What are your thoughts on this and how do we begin to help shed some, some, some views on this or how do we shed better, better light on this kind of view to help citizens or help our government to make the right choices going forward. You can call us on the numbers on your screen, 081 <laughs> You can also tweet to us at TVC Connect. Please hashtag your view TVC so we can read your tweet. We can't condemn this because there's nobody that's going to hear this and not condemn it. Mm. That's the easiest thing to do. But my, my, my most concern is we keep doing the same thing over and over know. again. And as the new governments are coming in, Nigerians are asking for better treatment from their government, better system, better sustainable development programs that actually develops the people. So these are the conversations we need to highlight as we begin to have new administrations coming in. But what are your thoughts on what happened in Zamfara State on Saturday? I feel sad. I feel sad because it's not even, you know, it even shows like they have gotten to a point where they've given up totally. Because usually you get to a point where people are holding placards and getting angry and calling people out. They have passed that level. They're like, you see, the only thing that can save us now is just talk to God and talk to God to turn their hearts. It reminds me of the Bible stories of the Israelites trying to turn the heart of Pharaoh. And he had to, you know, mm. that's where we are. And it is sad. It is sad because as a country, right, first of all, and we talk about the immense wealth that we have. We like to brag about it. We like to brag about all the resources we've been blessed with as Nigeria. As a state, Zamfara state, even though it's a developing state, it's just a state with so much untapped potential, yeah. you know, and it's, it makes me question, you know, every time, when I first joined the show, Moria once called me aside and says, ah, well, anytime um, government people come, don't be so quick to praise them question and ask mm. them and i was like auntie where i'm coming from <laughs> <laughs> we don't see half of these things so i am impressed mm. you know and that's what and, and it's sad because i know what these states can be mm. capable of the northern states just so huge not only in natural resources even human resources but children are out of school the insecurity boko haram all these things just come together and it's crushing the north you know some other governors are able to sort of pick themselves up and be creative but it seems like the northern governors are struggling in that you know a few of them have sort of differentiated themselves i think kano kaduna plato is trying <laughs> But many other say they seem to be lost on exactly what they need to do to help their people. We're, we're doing it the old way, where we are waiting for federal government to send us handouts and then we'll share it amongst them. But how long would you do that, mm -hmm. especially with a population that is constantly growing? The state needs to understand that it has to start to generate revenue. And if there are resources that the state has, um, maybe federal government has to sit down with state to see, you know what, even this is not meant to be um, under your purview. 
because of the poverty that is rampant in this state, because of what you need to cover up, the governor or the state can be in charge on some level, like a percentage mm -hmm. level, but to leave people to the point where they're desperately mm -hmm. calling on God oh. to change humans. Yeah. When we have a constitution, when we even know what you're meant to do, when we know that when you do not pay salaries, that should come with some form of punishment. If you put Nigerians or your citizens or your indigents through so much hardship, right. you should be able to face the law for doing that. And people are just turning to God because there's no oh. one else for them to turn towards. Let me come to you, BC, your initial thoughts, because this is a very interesting governor. Um, many, uh, um, I mean, the reports have shown mm -hmm. that he's one of the, um, the governors that refused to get his re-election bid. You know? So there are obviously some issues that he could have addressed that he didn't do. Let me come to your initial thoughts on, on this prayer session that was handled on Saturday. So these workers said that they have not been paid since January. Um, we know what has happened from January to date. And we know how, even with the resources that we have, even those of us that are still collecting our own salaries, how, how much of it goes for things that we can't even, we can't even afford anymore. Mm. The standard of living is constantly dropping. Our purchasing power is dropping. Today we took a story on inflation. It is going high. So even the uh, 20000 or 35000 you want to collect as your salary cannot even measure up. Mm to satisfy your needs. If you have a family man, a, a family that you cater for, that is a whole different ball game. You are definitely going to be doing two, three other jobs to be able to meet up. We know that. So this is painful to see full-blown adults after they have done their work, praying to be paid for the work that they have done, to be paid for the services that had, they have rendered to the state. Mm. Even the scripture says in 1 Timothy 5.18 that you must pay, a, 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 a worker deserves his wages. It's, a, a worker is worthy of his wages. If I put in the work, I must not be owed. And that's why they had to resort to prayer. Now, if you say, that you do not have money to pay your workers? Do you have money to service your infrastructure? Do you have money to service your own uh, pocket and your aids? Are you, are, you, are you saying that there is no money? And so for that, you are not taking your own salary as a governor. You are not able to pay your, your immediate uh, PAs, your aids. You are not able to service your car. You are not able to feel it. Or you are going ahead with meeting your own needs and owing these workers. So it's not enough to say there may not be money, but do you have the money to take care of yourself? A leader, first of all, would attend to his people. A, a leader eats last. That's the way I see it. So if you say there is no money, we should see in your account that there are some things we're not even able to do for ourselves as leaders, and we don't have the resources right. to pay you. You must be transparent, but it is wickedness to have all your needs met, and then your people who are making it possible for you to have those uh, 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 needs met are not being met halfway or any way at all. all. Right. So I, I, we, get, we get that. I mean, that's important. But some of these salaries are paid according to the law, according to what has been um, put aside for, um, for, for, for these positions as governor. However, what is really um, the crux of our conversation today really is because New governors are coming in, especially Zamfara State. They, they, he lost his bid yeah, to come really back. So he, he lost to PDP. I mean, I, I, if you recall, he was actually uh, PDP, was in the PDP party as of 2019, before when the Supreme Court uh, <clears throat> gave him actually the, the, the opportunity to decamp or to really run to, to APC, and that's how, how he became governor. But today, right now, he's lost his re-election bid. Mm -hmm. And we're saying that the new administration coming in, whomever it's it will, um, in, across all the states in the country, we cannot have a repeat of this because many of these things are not generating <clears> revenue. <throat> they are all going cap in hand to the center. And, we, and, and these are some of the tough conversations the new president-elect must begin to have. <clears throat> you can't have a team of governors, your party or not your party, who are not generating revenue. Yeah. If there's anything that the president-elect had done in his own state when he was governor, was to tell government governments, I don't need your money. Mm. I will find my money within. Yeah. And if there's anything the leader does is to replicate what he's done across the country. So we don't want a situation whereby citizens are going to God when there should be a system in place to pay their salaries. That's really conversation. How do we stop this, this, this effect, this continuity from, 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 from going on across many states?
I would expect that the governors are ingenious enough to think. If you choose to become a leader, you must be able to have, a, um, have foresight. You must be able to be visionary. So you look at the map of your state. You look at the natural resources that you have. And I'm also happy that they are trying as much as possible to take some things out of the exclusive list to the concurrent list so that governors have um, a form of control for some of their resources. So you must table what you have. Uh, this is a civil service state. We don't have a lot of factories because for you to generate money, like what Lagos did during the time that the federal government was not giving them allocation, they had to look inwards and look at the private organizations. How do we tax these people? It was, they made their money from taxing. But then a state like Zamfara, for instance, is not a, an industrial state, so to speak. Most headquarters are in places like Lagos, Abuja, and Port Harcourt. So in some of these states, they don't have uh, enough factories. So ask yourself, how do we get investors to come and put factories here? Because we need our people to, aside from government jobs, we can't employ everybody. We need our people to be employed in private sectors. So we need factories. Which conversations, which companies do I meet and tell them? What can I offer them to bring them? to my state, that's one of the ingenuity. Now, the natural resources that we have, uh, are there any loopholes why we're not making money into the coffers of the state and the federal government? How do we begin to fish out all, the, all those um, illegal miners that are all over the place taking our resources away? What do we do with the resources? These are some of the conversations right. governors should have, right. not just waiting folding arms and allowing the federal government send money and not send money. And then you complain that the state is not generating money. Right. What are you doing? Let me, let me go on a quick break. When we come back, because many have said that our president currently has his laissez-faire leadership, where he allows you to do. We're hoping the new president is not laissez-faire. We're hoping that he'll be able to ensure these governors work. But let's go on a quick break.